All right. I've been getting a lot of emails and a lot of requests uh, from people wanting to know how to set up their snake rack. So I'm going to do a little short clip on what I use to actually control the temperature on my rack and the, pl the probe placement and different little tidbits. But anyway, what we have right here, I'm going to use this rack because it's easy. I can get behind it. This is a Freedom Breeder medium rack. And this has the medium size bus tubs in it. And when I say bus tubs, it's because these are like the tubs that you see uh, bus boys use at restaurants. They got the little handle on them. It's for collecting dishes and stuff. That's where I see them the most. Uh, that's pretty cool. Paradox Lesser. Anyway, we'll talk about the snakes later. This is a medium rack. It's 12 levels high, three wide, so that's 36. And this is pretty much where I keep all my boys. I love keeping all my males in medium tubs. Um, and this is a Freedom Breeder rack. This has got the ventilated top, the expanded metal. And what I do with the bottom of this rack is you can see the rough edges. This is an older one. You can see the rough edges of the half inch um, insulation board that I have wire tied to the bottom of this rack. And that keeps the air from going up, cold air from going up underneath the racks, keeping it real cold. So usually the Freedom Breeder rack comes open on the bottom like that. And I've just chose to insulate the bottom of all of mine. And you can see it right there. All that is is that styrofoam board, that half inch styrofoam board. Actually this one isn't the nicest job we've done but we haven't changed it yet. But if you cut it to the same shape as the bottom and poke some holes in it you can wire tie it on just like that. It just keeps a draft off the bottom. And uh, what I do for my other bigger racks, my bigger CB70 Freedom Breeder rack, exact same thing but I have two heat panels on the bottom level. That keeps it warmer. So I'll just buy an extra heat panel and I'll run two on the bottom. Um, actually, I might have a shot of that somewhere. Where do I have a shot of that? Yeah, here we go. You can see that bottom level right there has got two heat panels and then I just go on up. And these are CB, this is a CB70 rack here. So that's the medium rack. And that's the front. It's 36 tubs. And here's what I heat with. I heat with the Helix. And this is the Helix DBS 1000. This is basically the basic version. No nighttime drop or anything on it. But you can plug a nighttime drop in at breeding season. And um, you can control when it goes off to drop down to a temperature. Like right now it's at a 96. You might drop it down to like 85 at night for 12 hours and then come back on and go to 96 or you might just have it drop down to nothing but uh, that's what I uh, heat control the heat on the panels with is the helix that's all I use is helix and uh, that little bracket right there is made by ARS caging I also use their cages as well it's a great little bracket to hold the helix as it slides right down there into the tube of the uh, rack because it's all tube metal Fits in there nice, looks good, looks really professional. All right, so that's what we got. Now let's look around the back. I've kind of moved some stuff around in the back so you guys can see what's happening. But here's the back of it. And as you can see, Freedom Breeder puts these little stoppers here. That stops the box from going too far in the back and having the snakes get out. But you can see each one of these has a heat panel, each level. Heat panel, heat panel, heat panel. And they each got a cord that goes to the heat panel. And what I do, push these boxes out so you guys can see it better. I don't have snakes running. But this is the way the heat panel works. It just sits there on Velcro. It's got little ears on it, little flanges. Sits there on Velcro. The Vel and there's, you know, they're both Velcroed which keeps it from sliding or moving around when the boxes come across it. And then what happens is, when you slide your box back, there it is over top of the heat. 
and that's where the snake's hide box is. The snake's hide box would be right here in the back, and he would be over to heat. And this right here is very nice and warm. Freedom Breeder pretty much puts the Velcro in the back. You don't have to put your heat panels here. You can move them over this way a little bit, or you can even move them over this way a little bit. I mean, you can move this Velcro and put it in the middle. It's up to you, but most people like to keep their heat in the back because they know that's where their snake wants to hang out. Snakes just seem to like to hang out under the hide box in the back, so that's where the panels are. So that's how that works. That's your heat panel. And you can see the expanded metal there. And each one of these heat panels has a nice plug on it. A nice grounded plug. And it starts out there where it's connected to the heat tape. And I just did a real nice clean job of wire, tie, wire tying it. And it expanded. And it just lays here in the back. And when the snake tubs are back, they ride right over top of it. Some people like to put that wire underneath of the heat panel. They like to tuck it up under there. But sometimes when you push the snake boxes in, they'll push the uh, heat panel down. And this heat panel has an edge to it. And that heat panel could cut into the wire. So if you can, I would just let the wires float in the back. Most people don't have access to a back of their racks anyway. So you never even see it. So that's how the heat panels work. Now, what they plug into. 12 levels, 12 heat panels, and they all plug in to this heat strip. Well, heat strip, this ain't a heat strip. This is a power strip, people. Nice long power strip. I'm thinking that's a four footer, but you can see, and that's nice. This has got a real nice heavy duty cord on it, and it's made to receive quite a few outlets. So that is mounted to the back. And all of the heat panels are plugged into that. And you can see them. They go right on down the line. So all the heat panels are plugged into one unit, which would be this. Now this is plugged into the main supply on the helix. This right here is a grounded helix cord. This is why it's so big. This white one right here is coming off the helix. And the helix is powering this. And anything plugged into this is what's going to heat up. So the helix is the white and it's powering the black. And the black, of course, is this strip here. And that strip is all the heat panels. So that's how that works. Now here is the numero uno, number one thing. This little black cord, this probe. And I got these made special. These are Ralph Davis helix with eight foot probe cords. This probe cord starts up there, comes right off the back end of the helix, and it comes on down. And this is where everybody calls or emails and wants to know what to do with it. This is how I do it, and this is what works for me. There's other ways to do it, but this is what I like to do. Here's the helix, and it goes all the way to a probe, a little probe point. That end is sturdy. It's kind of hard, solid plastic right there. Anyway, you can see I've got that tape directly to the top of the heat panel in between boxes. So when these boxes are closed, there it sits. Nothing's hitting it. It's not obstructed. I don't have to worry about these tubs hitting it or knocking it off because you don't want that to happen. And all I've used is clear plastic shipping tape. That's all I've used on that so I could see the probe, make sure nothing weird was happening to it over time. Um, I'm not sure what kind of fire hazard that tape is, but I can tell you, I haven't had any problems, and this is the way I've done it. I've seen people use electrical tape, which seems to curl up and, and get loose sometimes. Um, I'm sure you can use some kind of duct tape. You know, I'm not telling anybody how to burn their house down. All I'm showing you is how I do it. So that's taped directly to the heat panel, people. Some people say, do you tape it underneath? Do you, where the heat tape is, which is the heat tape is directly underneath of this metal right here. Um, and I don't do that. I tape directly to that and I work from that. Some people, you know, try to take that probe and put it into a box and, you know, they'll have one box in a whole rack system that's basically never used because that's for the heat and that, that helps control. And as you can see, let's walk back around front. 